Abemus Papam. This week, we meet our new Pope and look at the moments leading up to his election. Hello and welcome to this much anticipated edition of Vatican Connections. We have a Pope and what a Pope we have. His election stunned the world. After weeks of planning, preparing and trying to predict, no one saw this coming, not even the experts. After the last ballot of the day, people waited under umbrellas in St. Peter's Square. When would the smoke start and what color would it be? Would we go through another day of waiting? Well, the smoke started out gray, but soon turned unmistakably white, and the bells of St. Peter's began to ring, a definitive sign that a new pope had been chosen. The hour passed quickly, and then the real excitement began. Annuncio vobis gaudium magnum, abemus papam. Eminentissimum ac reverendissimum dominum, dominum Georgium Marium, Sancte Romani Ecclesi Cardinalem Bergoglio. Qui sibi nomen imposuit Franciscum. Not only was he not on anybody's papabile list, he was a groundbreaking choice. He's the first non-European pope in 1,000 years. He's also the first Jesuit to be chosen pope, and he's the first to take the name Francis. As Cardinal of Buenos Aires, he was known to tell people to call him Father Jorge. He renounced the apostolic palace in favor of a modest apartment, took public transit to work, and didn't hesitate to visit the Villa Miserias, or the slums of Buenos Aires, to meet his parishioners. Now, on his first day as Pope, Francis, the new pontiff, lived up to his reputation for simplicity. He took a plain, unmarked car to the Basilica of St. Mary Major. There, he left flowers at the altar dedicated to Our Lady and spent some time in silent prayer before leaving the small group in the Salve Regina. He also prayed at the tomb of Pope Pius V and visited the altar where St. Ignatius celebrated his first Mass. He also took the time to greet people who work at the Basilica and maintain the sacristy. Later on that day, His Holiness Pope Francis celebrated his first Mass as Supreme Pontiff. In his homily, he said, We walk in the light of the Lord. Our lives are a journey. When we stop, there is something wrong. He went on to say that in our task of building up the church, Christ is and must be for us the cornerstone. Pope Francis then spoke about the fundamental need to proclaim Christ crucified, saying, if we walk without the cross, if we build without the cross, if we proclaim Christ without the cross, then we are not disciples of Jesus. But before all of this happened, we had to go through the conclave, which started last Tuesday with the Misa Pro Eligendo Papa, the Mass to elect a pontiff. Dean of the College of Cardinals, Cardinal Angelo Sodano, gave the homily, and in it he said, In the wake of this service of love towards the Church and towards all of humanity, the last popes have been builders of so many good initiatives for people and for the international community, tirelessly promoting justice and peace. Let us pray that the future pope may continue this unceasing work on the world level.
Later that day, the cardinals took the oath of secrecy. In a solemn moment, all 115 cardinal electors put their hand on the gospel and swore to keep everything that happened in the conclave a secret. Tego Georgius Marius Cardinalis Bergoglio Spondio Bovio Aduro Sigmedeus Adjuvet Et Ac Santa Dei Evangelia after all the cardinals took the oath, the master of ceremonies, Monsignor Guido Marini, declared extra omnes, which means everybody out. After everyone had left the Sistine Chapel, and among them was our very own Father Thomas Rosica, the master of ceremonies closed the door of the Sistine Chapel. And from that moment on, the cardinal electors were alone. We just needed to wait over 24 hours and two puffs of black smoke to get a new pope. It was a surprise to the world to see Pope Francis emerge on the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica. Catholic News Service spoke to Cardinal Timothy Dolan to get his reaction and insights on this papal election. He's already won our hearts. He obviously won our hearts because he's, he's the new pope. But he just, we just had a very a beautiful fraternal meal at the Dome of Santa Marta, where we've been staying. And he told us, he said, <laughs> when he, we toasted him, the Cardinal Secretary of State toasted him, and then he toasted us, and he simply said, May God forgive you, <laughs> which brought the house down. In other words, the uh, uh, I hope you I hope you don't regret this later. It's very difficult to explain here. Obviously, you get to know the new pope as a brother cardinal, as we have for a long time. But all of a sudden, the identity is different. His name is different. His clothes is different. Our relationship with him. So the same man that that morning you may have been walking with your hand around his arm, all of a sudden you're going back and very, you go up to him and very spontaneously genuflect and kiss his ring and embrace him and promise him your love and allegiance and loyalty and prayer. And it's, a very, it's an astounding moment. Uh, as simple and as humble and as sincere as he so radiantly is, his identity is new now, as Jesus did with, with uh, the first pope, with Simon and Peter. That, that I found extraordinarily moving. So... Omnipotentis, Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, descenda super vos. Yes, he immediately said to us, uh, I choose the name Francis in honor of St. Francis of Assisi. Now, I guess that's because some thinking, knowing that he's a Jesuit, might have thought it was St. Francis Xavier. So he quickly clarified that. It didn't surprise us because you've all done your homework already. And you know how renowned he was for his beautiful care and love uh, for the poor in Buenos Aires. And he's, now this is interesting too. Apparently in Buenos Aires, he takes the bus every day to work. And sure enough, tonight, did you hear what happened? Of course, we're all together there hanging out the windows while he's there at the balcony, and then we all, as he's greeting people in what's called the Hall of Benedictions, we went downstairs like we have been, uh, leaving the Sistine Chapel, and there's buses there for us, just simple little buses, about five or six to take the Cardinals back to the Dome of Santa Marta. And I didn't know this because uh, as I left, things are back to normal, and there you see the Holy Father's car, and the lead car, and the back car, the security, and the motorcycles, and also, I thought, well, things are back to normal. The Pope's car is back from the oil change or whatever. So we take the buses over, and then we kind of, the Cardinals wait outside to greet the new Holy Father as he comes back to Doma Santa Marta, where he's been living. And as the last bus pulls up, guess who gets off the bus? Pope Francis. So I guess he told the driver, that's okay, I'll just go with the guys in the bus. So. Even though nationality and geography is important, I think most cardinals just want to choose the right man. You know, you want a man of God. Uh, you want a man of good pastoral governance. Uh, you want a man with a sense of the church universal. You want a good communicator. 
and he fills those bills. Where he comes from is gravy. And we got a lot of good gravy with a man coming now from Latin America. You, you talk about a booster shot uh, to the church in, uh, in the Americas. This is going to be a real blessing. I, I didn't take those things seriously. I'd like to say this especially to the New York press. I told you so. <laughs> So I never took that seriously, but so uh, there's a sense of relief, not that I ever th thought about rumors that I would hear, there's a sense of relief on all of us and a sense of peace and serenity because once again, Jesus is taking care of his church and uh, he's provided us with a new good shepherd. And there's a, that, that in itself is a sense of relief. In fact, the Holy Father, Pope Francis said to us tonight, I'm going to sleep well, and something tells me you will too, and we will. We'll sleep well tonight knowing that the church is in good hands. These are historic moments for the church. First, we have a pope who resigned, and then the first pope ever from the American continent. These events have drawn emotion from all Catholics. CNS sat down with seminarians from the North American College in Rome to find out about their emotions during these historic days. It's a really exciting time. I mean, not only to see um, a pope abdicate, but which hasn't happened for hundreds of years, but to see possibly the election of the first non-European pope. Um, of course, we've had some Northern African popes way back when, but um, this would really be a significant statement by the cardinals to elect a non-European. A group of us meet like a half hour before the designated times, basically before the votes, um, even when the smoke's not due to come up if there's no pope. Uh, just because, I mean, being united around the future pope, even now, uh, it's that union with the Vicar of Christ on Earth. We don't know, the Holy Spirit knows who it is already, but we don't know. But being down in that square, kind of everyone getting together, you know, you get your umbrellas even though it's raining out, and you go down, even if it's black smoke and there's that, you know, kind of that sigh, the collective sigh in the square that goes off. Um, there's still that, you know, this afternoon or tomorrow, you know, there will be a Pope. It's wonderful that I'm able to be here during this time of conclave. None of us expected this, none of us thought it would happen. Um, and it's, it's pure gift that I'm able to be here for it. Um, and taking that back home, um, you, I get emails and messages and Facebook posts from people back home who are just so excited that I'm able to be here and to witness this. And uh, one of our professors said to us, people won't remember what class you were in on you know, this day in March, but they'll know and want to know, were you at the smoke? Did you see the conclave? Did you see the new pope come out? There is that sense of anticipation and exciting, like, is this going to be it? You know, are we waiting? You know, because nobody knows. But, uh, you know, to, to be there to witness this, it's, there's something, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then when we see the black smoke, there's a sense of disappointment, but there's a sense of, well, maybe, uh, maybe later this afternoon. <laughs> and um, there are plenty of people that will ask, you know, well, what do you think the Cardinals are? What are they doing? Do they have a, you know, a front runner? And I just say, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there's, it really is. And for me, the other thing that I've uh, experienced of being down in, in the square is that I found myself praying as well, knowing that just in the, the chapel there that the, the, the cardinals are, um, are praying as well, but taking this job very, very seriously on who they elect. So best thing I can do is to support them with the prayers, um, um, my, my own prayers and being down in the square. Seeing the Pope, seeing the white smoke come out of the Sistine Chapel, I mean, the joy in the square is just so, uh, so palpable, so, so evident 
to see all the faith of the people, witness basically a miracle, witness the Holy Spirit at work in today's world. I mean, to think that this has been happening, not, not in the current ceremony that it has right now, but the election of a pope in Rome has been happening for 2,000 years. And just the miracle that everyone's witnessing, that you see the Vicar of Christ on Earth, you see the channel of the Holy Spirit working through those now 115 men as they give themselves to the Pope, uh, to, the, to, the, to the Holy Spirit and elect a new Pope. Watching all of that and then seeing the end result of the Holy Spirit really working through these men is just incredible. It's just overwhelming. Some known church watchers have also reacted to this papal election. Sienna sat down with George Weigel to get his take. As for Latin America, uh, first of all, let's be clear that the church's uh, ministry of charity and justice is an integral part of the new evangelization. We don't have new evangelization Catholics here and social justice Catholics over here. Secondly, in Latin America, what is called social justice Catholicism is primarily a phenomenon of elites, uh, not of 500 million Catholics. Uh, those 500 million Catholics are a huge challenge for the church because their religion over 500 years has not shaped uh, societies that raise up the poor and has deep elements of folk religiosity that need, frankly, purification. Uh, I, was, I was, interestingly enough, I was test running certain ideas from the book Evangelical Catholicism in uh, Argentina uh, last May, May of, of 2012. And I found great interest in this. Uh, the serious churchmen I met with in Argentina, uh, including the man who was the runner-up in the conclave of 2005, Cardinal Bergoglio of Buenos Aires, wonderful man, um, understand that the only future for Catholicism, which is now getting hammered from two sides, uh, Pentecostalism, which has a great emotional appeal in Latin America, and secularism, uh, transmitted by a globalized uh, mass culture, mass media culture that's pretty destructive of, of traditional uh, biblical faith and values that the only future for the church in Latin America is to stop being uh, a church of cultural habit and to becoming a church of evangelical mission. Did you know the last non-European pope was elected more than a millennium ago? He was Saint Gregory III and he was from Syria. He was elected in 731 and he ruled the church until 741. Now what better way to find out what kind of a leader Pope Francis will be than to speak to someone who has experienced his leadership firsthand. Joining me on Skype is Father Horacio Ortiz. He is a pastor at the parish of Nuestra Señora del Perpetuo Socorro in Buenos Aires. Father Horacio was ordained by Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio in 1998. Father Horacio, what did you feel in that moment when you heard Giorgio Marios followed by Bergoglio? Bueno, a diferencia del resto del mundo, creo que aquí en Buenos Aires eh, no, no hizo falta llegar a Bergoglio. Eh, el Giorgio Marios alcanzó para paralizarnos el corazón, que es lo que casi me ocurrió a mí. Aunque parezca ridículo, eh, creo que se abrió muy grande mi boca, <risa> estupefacto creo que es la palabra, eh, sorprendido. Eh, fue una, una mezcla de, de, de sentimientos, de, de emociones, de alegría. Y me pasó algo raro que después por la tarde lo, lo prediqué en la misa, eh, como un sentimiento de mucha responsabilidad también, que creo que, su, que supone. Eh, los argentinos no por lo menos los que somos católicos, nos, nos vemos como más comprometidos a partir de este momento. What type of bishop is the new Pope Francis? Or better, better yet, what, is his, what would you say is his leadership style? Él, él me, me ordenó con mis compañeros eh, ya desde el año 98, 
como diácono en marzo, después fue en octubre de ese mismo año de sacerdote, y de él dependen todos mis destinos como sacerdote, las parroquias por donde fui eh, pasando, eh, digamos, es una persona que de la que depende la Iglesia de Buenos Aires hace ya más de 15 años. A nadie le sorprendía encontrar en el subte, en el metro, en el subway, en, eh, a, al arzobispo, ya era, era, era costumbre. Nadie se sorprendía por encontrar en, en un colectivo, en un bus. Es un líder fuerte, de carácter fuerte, firme, quizás sea una mejor palabra. Eh, tiene sólidas, profundas convicciones y las sabe comunicar eh, no solo con su palabra, si acompañan esas palabras sus signos, sus gestos. Eh, todos habrán visto al salir del balcón que el gesto más grande cuál fue. Él se inclinó ante toda la plaza. Ver a un papa que se inclina ante su pueblo marca, es, es un gesto demasiado eh, obvio o evidente, al menos para los que conocemos eh, el pensamiento cristiano, ¿no? la palabra de Jesús, que entre ustedes el que, el que tiene poder es el que sirve. Para los cristianos la palabra poder es sinónimo de servicio. Él lo resumió en ese gesto de pedir que los demás recen y agacharse eh, delante de la multitud. Él vive lo que dice. Te este, puede o no gustar, pero a la hora de, de un argumento no te queda solo en el argumento de palabra. Es una vida. Eh, y ciertamente con, con dos palabras que él usa, y se las vamos a escuchar pronto, supongo, porque aquí las conocemos, dos términos que él equilibra muy bien. Eh, firmeza y ternura. Is there any specific memory or any special memory of Cardinal Bergoglio that you can't help but think of now that you see him as Pope Francis? Eh, <laughs> sí, se me pasaron muchas. Yo muy agradecido particularmente porque hace 2007, harán cinco años y medio, eh, ya hacía diez años de mi sacerdocio y yo siempre tuve una inquietud que era seguir estudiando algo eh, y en particular tenía ganas de estudiar eh, algo de comunicaciones, ¿no? En comunicaciones. Y, y me animé a charlarlo con él y, y me encontré con, con, con un padre, esa ternura que te, te decía recién, ¿no? Reflejada en su paternidad, en su comprensión. Eh, y lejos de, de mis dudas o de mis miedos, encontré a alguien que enseguida me apoyó, me animó. Al despedirme, me dice, y cuando termines tu maestría, que no se te ocurra seguir estudiando un doctorado. O sea, que te está esperando una parroquia para trabajar a la vuelta. Eh, porque sabe muy bien de algunas mañas que alguno que le gusta estudiar por ahí eternamente vive estudiando eh, y no aterriza después eso en un lugar donde justamente, lo que decíamos, lo vuelve un servicio. ¿eh? With the papal election, we thought we'd use this segment to share your reactions to the election of Pope Francis. Daniela La Monica said, We welcome Pope Francis with an open heart and pray that we will be able to support you in your new journey in following Christ's footsteps. May we grow to love you more and more as each day goes by as our Holy Father on earth. Thomas Marlene said, a new day for Catholics all over the world. To God be the glory. And F. Marceline Riambi said, I admire how he brought the square to complete silence and prayer on his very first moments as Pope, a symbol of total surrender to the will of God. The angels must be rejoicing with us right now. Lanto Rakoto Mamonij said, When he asked us to pray for him, I prayed, and I focused my prayer on love. To my great astonishment, he uttered firmly, fraternity and prayer. I trust in him. He needs to be supported in the heavy tasks awaiting him. Be blessed, Pope Francois. Vatican Connections is interactive. Send us your questions or comments by Facebook, Twitter, email or post. Via email, send comments to info at saltandlighttv.org. And by post, 
Send letters to 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1, Canada. And that's it for this edition of Vatican Connections. We will bring you all of the first events of Pope Francis's first week as Pope. The First Angelus is on Sunday, and the Inauguration Mass is next Tuesday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern or 1.30 a.m. Pacific. And of course, next week we'll tell you everything you want to know about the new Pope. But for now, we leave you with images from that historic moment when the Church's first Latin American Pope was announced and appeared on the balcony. From everyone here, thank you for watching. Fratelli e sorelle, buonasera. Voi sapete che il dovere del conclave era di dare un vescovo a Roma. Sembra che i miei fratelli cardinali sono andati a prenderlo quasi alla fine del mondo, ma siamo qui. Vi ringrazio l'accoglienza la Comunità Diocesana di Roma, al suo Vescovo. Grazie. E prima di tutto, prima di tutto, vorrei fare una preghiera per il nostro Vescovo in merito, Benedetto XVI. Preghiamo tutte insieme per lui, perché il Signore lo benedica e la Madonna lo custodisca. Padre nostro che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la tua volontà, come in cielo così in terra. Dacci oggi il nostro pane quotidiano e rimetti a noi i nostri debiti. Per noi lo rimettiamo ai nostri debitori e non ci indurre in tentazione, ma liberaci dal male. Ave Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te. Ben sei benedetta, grazie a Dio. Benedetto è il frutto del tuo Segno Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, prega per noi peccatori. Adesso è l'ora della nostra morte. Amen. Gloria al Padre, e al Figlio, e allo Spirito Santo, come era nel principio, e ora è sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. E adesso incominciamo questo cammino, Vescovo e Popolo, Vescovo e popolo questo cammino della Chiesa di Roma, che è quella che presiede nella carità a tutte le chiese, un cammino di fratellanza, d'amore, di fiducia fra noi. Preghiamo sempre per noi, l'uno per l'altro. Preghiamo per tutto il mondo, perché ci sia una grande fratellanza. Vi auguro che questo cammino di Chiesa che oggi incominciamo e chi mi aiuterà è il mio Cardenale Vicario qui presente, eh, sia fruttuoso per l'evangelizzazione di questa tanta bella città. E adesso... Vorrei dare la benedizione, ma prima, prima vi chiedo un favore. Prima che il Vescovo benedica il popolo, vi chiedo che voi pregate al Signore perché mi benedica la preghiera del popolo, chiedendo la benedizione per il suo Vescovo. Facciamo... Facciamo in silenzio... Questa preghiera di voi su di me.
Adesso vi darò la benedizione a voi e a tutto il mondo, a tutti gli uomini e donne di buona volontà. Santi Apostoli Petrus e Paulus, de quorum potestate et autoritate confidimus, ipsi intercedan per nobis ad Dominum. Amen. Precibus et meritis beate Maria Semper Virginis, beati Michaelis Arcangeli, beati Ioannis Baptiste, e Santorum Apostolorum Petri et Pauli et Omnium Sanctorum. Misiratur vesti omnipotens eus, et dimissis omnibus peccatibus vestis, perducat vos, Iesus Christus, ad vita in eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam, ad solucionem, ad remissionem omnium peccatorum vestorum, spazium vere et fructuose penitentiae, cor sempre penitens, et emendationem vitae, gratia nel consolationem, sancti spiritus et finalen perseverantia in bonis operibus trigua ad bovis, omnipotens e misericors dominus. Amen. Et benedictio Dei omnipotentis, patris, et filii, et spiritus santi, descenda super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Grazie tante dell'accoglienza. Pregate per me e a, a, a presto, ci vediamo presto. Domani voglio andare a pregare la Madonna perché custodisca a tutta Roma. Buona, buona notte e buon riposo. Bene.